Hey, I'm Tamara Kendacker, and you're listening to The Decibel from The Globe and Mail. On Thursday, Ontario's health minister, Christine Elliott, said the government wasn't ruling out making vaccination against COVID-19 mandatory for healthcare workers. This was in response to questions from the opposition about why the government's been letting workers who haven't been vaccinated stay on the job as long as they get tested on a regular basis, even though workers in long-term care homes face the possibility of losing their jobs if they don't. But the reality is that the people in our long-term care homes are the most vulnerable. They are the ones where we have seen breakouts happen, where we need to make sure we can protect them. But rest assured, should we see a similar situation unfolding, and we're watching this very carefully on a daily basis, we won't hesitate to introduce it elsewhere. Right now, though, This is still being debated in Ontario, even as two mandatory vaccination deadlines for healthcare workers are already coming up in Quebec and British Columbia. There are still thousands who, for a variety of reasons, haven't been vaccinated in those provinces, and there's worry that many of them would rather lose their jobs than comply. So why are there still so many healthcare workers who are unvaccinated? And could a vaccine mandate push them to get the shot? We kind of think that healthcare workers magically love science, and that's not true. They're just, they're not that different from other people. That's Andre Picard, The Globe's health columnist. He's been following the story. He joins me today on The Decibel. Hi, Andre. Welcome back. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks. So there are a couple of deadlines coming up for healthcare workers to get vaccinated. So in Quebec, You have to have both shots uh, by October 15th. In BC, you need to be fully vaccinated by October 26th, at which point, if you're not vaccinated, you risk losing your job. So do we have a sense of how many workers in these provinces are still unvaccinated? Uh, We know from Quebec, Quebec is very good at keeping records. So we know that 92% of workers are vaccinated. So about uh, 15,607 workers don't have any shots yet. So those are the ones who risk uh, being suspended without pay, and they risk actually losing their jobs if they don't change their mind. And what about BC? Do we have a sense of what's going on there? Uh, we have a sense it's about the same numbers, but BC's not very good with releasing data on anything. So they've uh, been a, l- a little more vague about uh, exactly how many people don't have shots, but it's in the same range. Right. And I know uh, BC's Nurses Union has come out against uh, this vaccine mandate, and they've said that 20% of their members are not vaccinated. But this is obviously just nurses and not all healthcare workers. Yeah, that's 20% not fully vaccinated. So that's different than not vaccinated. And uh, the union has been, you know, profoundly divided about this. They lost their president over it. The sense is that nurses are actually more vaccinated than, say, personal support workers. But we don't know exactly the breakdowns. Uh, Quebec hasn't released breakdowns either, except to say frontline workers are only about a quarter of the people. Right. So the percentages sound low, but it's still thousands of healthcare workers who aren't fully vaccinated. So, I mean, what's your sense of why that is? Why are so many healthcare workers still unvaccinated? Well, the reality is healthcare workers aren't that different from the population. So we know about one in five people in the general population are not vaccinated. Uh, it's actually lower among healthcare workers, but they're subject to the same uh, concerns. Uh, they buy into misinformation. They have their quirks. They have their conspiracy theories. They're influenced by family. So uh, we kind of think that healthcare workers magically love science, and that's not true. They're just they're not that different from other people. What have you heard from healthcare workers themselves? What do they say are their reasons for not wanting to get vaccinated? Well, it's a full gamut. Uh, Some people say I've been infected. A lot of healthcare workers got infected. They feel they have natural immunity. Some of them buy into the full, you know, whole hog into the conspiracy theories. We're going to have a a microchip implanted into us. It's poison, stuff like that. And then there's a lot of people who it has to do with their work conditions. A lot of healthcare workers are badly treated. They're just tired of being told what to do. I think that's a huge part of it. It's just like a a pushback. And I don't think it's the right hill to die on, but I, I really understand that the feeling because they're just put upon constantly. And this is just one more thing being told what to do. 
I wonder if you can elaborate on that a little bit. What What is it that these healthcare workers are angry about when it comes to their working conditions? Well, let's take Quebec as an example. Quebec nurses uh, have mandatory overtime. They were denied their holidays in the summer. They were denied their Christmas holidays, all this because of the pandemic. Quebec had a a really bad first wave and the nurses have paid the price. uh, And so have the personal support workers. A lot of them got sick. Uh, They get very badly paid. Their pay has been increased, but they were getting as little as $13 an hour. So they work in terrible conditions. They're taken for granted. They're burned out. There's all kinds of reasons to be angry and you just say you know one more thing you have to go get a vaccine you might have to take two days off because you don't feel well you don't have proper sick pay there's a whole bunch of reasons that i understand why people are reluctant and they're angry but ultimately we have to put the patients first when all is said and done so there are racialized healthcare workers who don't want to get vaccinated because they don't trust the healthcare system. And I, and I wonder how much of a factor you think that is, the distrust in the healthcare institutions. I think there's a distrust in institutions more generally. That's what's really fueling the whole anti-vaccine movement, and it's the same in healthcare. A lot of people, as you mentioned, are racialized workers. They're immigrants and refugees. They come from countries where you should distrust government and healthcare systems profoundly. So you you don't lose that uh, cultural feeling immediately. Uh, And there's a lot of things to distrust about our system. They do get badly treated. It's not organized. Uh, You don't always believe what your bosses are telling you. So a lot of this is legitimate, but how do you articulate it? How do you respond to it, I think, is the question. And I'm not sure refusing a vaccine is the way to to protest that or to show your distrust. Mm -hmm. But how do you think the healthcare system can tackle this issue, like combat the mistrust problem? Well, you know, I think like everything in Canadian healthcare, the solutions are right there before us and we just don't uh, embrace them. So we have a lot of institutions where it's almost 100% vaccination of workers and we just have to look at what they've done. Uh, You get uh, peer-to-peer support is really important. That's the greatest influence is what are your friends and family doing? So you enlist peers who've been vaccinated to talk to others. You talk to them in their language. You talk to them on the social media platforms they use, like WhatsApp are very popular popular with some groups, and that's just totally been ignored by public health. And you listen to people. The The key to addressing anti-vaccine or vaccine hesitancy is to meet people where they are. What exactly are you worried about? Here's how can I answer that? Uh, if my answer is insufficient, can I go back and get more? You have to do the, the legwork, and we haven't done that. You know, I've, I've always been reluctant to say we should have mandatory vaccinations for that reason. I think we really have to do a lot of work before we get there. But I think we're at that point in the pandemic where we we do have to pull the trigger. We have to get tough. And why do you think this is the moment to bring in these mandates? I think there's a couple of reasons. I think Delta has fundamentally changed the game, so it's much more uh, infectious. Also, we have a lot more people vaccinated in the general population, so it seems like a a perversity to not have as many healthcare workers vaccinated as in the, the general public, so that's important. And I think the third one is it's really a new pandemic now. It's become a pandemic of the unvaccinated. If you look at the science, essentially everyone who's unvaccinated is going to get this virus, so that makes it all the more dangerous in the healthcare setting. So we, you know, we've done the cajoling, we've done the educating, we've done the begging, we've done the bribing, uh, paying people and such. And we've done all that stuff. People have had ample opportunity. And now I think we have to start using the stick a bit. Right. For me, it's still hard to wrap my head around why there are healthcare workers who are opposed to the vaccine, given the risk that they're in on the job, um, you know, given the fact that they must have some level of understanding and respect for science, um, they've seen firsthand what COVID looks like. Why are there workers, even if it's just a small percentage, who are susceptible to misinformation and who are still opposed to the vaccine? I think you have to, to understand that, you have to get pretty deep into human psychology. And I think it doesn't apply just to health workers. It's we, we make excuses. You know, we feel that we're invulnerable. So a lot of health workers feel they're, they're young, they're healthy. They see people at their worst. You know, they see the people getting sick. They're old and they're rickety. And they think that that's not me. I I think it's a lot of it is just sort of uh, self protection. You know, you kind of create this mythology around yourself about I'm fine. And I think they do that in their day-to-day work. I'm never going to be like these patients. I'm young and I'm healthy and I'm smart. 
And uh, the psychology of that is complex. But again, I always come back to it. I don't think they're that different from the general public, and we, we shouldn't expect them to be. Mm -hmm. What is the breakdown between healthcare workers who are refusing to get vaccinated and those who just haven't had time to do it or haven't gotten vaccinated for other sort of practical reasons? We don't know exactly. You know, there's not a lot of data on this. We just have raw numbers on who has the shot and who doesn't. But I think anecdotally, we know that there are actually very few people who are anti-vaccination. It's a very tiny percentage. There's mandatory vaccines already. Uh, hepatitis B is the one that's the most common. Uh, you can't even get into nursing school if you don't have that vaccine because it's a, a big risk to anyone in a surgical setting to, to the patients. And a lot of it is just practical stuff. It's a fear of having to take a day off. It's getting to the clinic. Uh, it's just these uh, fear of needles, you know, pretty basic stuff that's easily addressed. And I think we can take, again, we can learn from other jurisdictions. We saw in New York, New York had a very strict vaccine mandate, had, you know, tens of thousands of people who weren't vaccinated. They were fearful of uh, losing workers. And when push came to shove, you know, less than 1% of people didn't get their shots on time and they seem to also be getting them. So I think the lesson from New York is you have to call workers bluffs, you have to be tough and you have to stand firm despite all the threats. Uh, they haven't had the crisis that many predicted and some of those workers may still come around. Uh, when people are forced to choose between a job, uh, especially if it's a good paid unionized job and having some kind of fundamental distrust, I think they kind of just go with the, the vaccine. They may maybe hold their nose and do it, but they do it. And I think we'll see that in Canada as well. You wrote a column recently arguing that every healthcare worker needs to be vaccinated without exception or they need to find another job. Why do you think it's crucial that every healthcare worker get vaccinated? Well, you know, they work with the most vulnerable people. They work with people with compromised immune systems, with elders, etc. So the people they work with, especially on the front lines, are at great risk. So you can't afford to have virus circulating. Uh, even if all the patients are vaccinated, which most of them are, it's not 100% effective. I'm curious, what's the response been like to your column? Well, the response to columns uh, tends to be mixed uh, and very passionate these days. Uh, COVID has brought out a lot of passions in people. Yeah. I'd say I heard from, you know, the usual suspects, the, the very loud, small minority of anti-vaccine people are outraged, you know, you want to poison people, etc., uh, from health workers, it's the, it's been mostly supportive. People saying, yes, exactly. I don't want to work side by side with someone who's unvaccinated. So a lot of that. Uh, the people I haven't heard from, unfortunately, I think are the vaccine hesitant, the ones who aren't out there. And I'm not sure they, they engage with uh, traditional media that much. Or So I think it's hard to get a real sense of, of what the true reaction is. So we actually spent some time going through the, the hundreds of comments on this column and, and trying to figure out the most common arguments that people are making against these mandates. And, and I wonder if you could just respond to some of what we've read. Um, so the first argument is around the fear that this will result in a staffing shortage within the healthcare system. Um, what do you make of that? Well, you know, I think that's a real concern, but the staffing shortage is much more profound than uh, vaccine hesitancy. It's probably the number one problem in healthcare today is we just are understaffed chronically and it's getting much worse. So that's a big, big issue. But the answer to it is not to just fold to people's whims. We can't say that, oh, we need workers, so I guess you can smoke in patient rooms. Mm -hmm. You have to have rules. Uh, people have to have standards and we have to meet them. And the Labor issue is a really important one, but it's not something that you compromise on. You don't compromise patient safety because you want more workers. What if that does happen? How would the system function if suddenly you didn't have thousands of workers? Well, I think uh, that's the reality we live with every day. We do. We are missing thousands of workers now, so it struggles. The system is struggling. Uh, what Quebec is doing is it's uh, uh, going out and it's recruiting 
nurses who are retired, for example, to come back on the job. It's facilitating them getting their licenses back, uh, waiving fees, things like that. Uh, one of the, the big solutions to our labor problem is, is actually that. We have as many nurses in Canada who aren't working as nurses as who are. Mm -hmm. So we have a real retention problem. And this is an example where we're, we're being a little creative to solve it. And hopefully we'll, we'll use those methods more permanently, not just for COVID vaccination. So you actually brought up this next argument that we saw in the comments. There are people who already have natural immunity because they've had COVID. So why do they need to get the vaccine? Well, the natural arg immunity argument is a big one. We hear about it all the time. Uh, there's two reasons. One is people's immunity varies widely. So we just don't know how immune someone is if they got sick earlier in the pandemic. Uh, we'd have to measure their titers. That's how you measure the immunity. Uh, and you'd have to do that fairly regularly. So it's a, it's a bother. Uh, it would be difficult. Uh, we know that uh, there's some evidence that uh, immunity wanes faster from an infection than it does from the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So there's no downside to getting vaccinated. It's not going to make you less immune or more immune. It's just going to give you the immunity like everyone else. So it's, it's a simplicity argument. And I think it's a complexity argument. I don't think we've quite grappled in society yet with what to do about natural immunity. And we have mm -hmm. to deal with that. But this is not the place to do it. This is urgent that people get their immunity. So we have to do the vaccines and do them quickly. And then, of course, there's people who can't get the vaccine due to a medical reason. Are exemptions part of these mandates? And, and what are those people supposed to do? Yeah, the only exemption is for people with a real medical problem. So people who are allergic to a component of the vaccine, and that's a very tiny number. These are not uh, vaccines that cause a lot of allergic reactions. And what do they do? I think we have to accommodate that very small number and let them work in a not on the front line setting. So give them an alternate job during the pandemic. And that's the best solution. But that's such a tiny number. I don't think it's worth getting worked up about. Uh, what we're seeing in lots of jurisdictions is people claiming all kind of bogus exemptions. And we can't allow that. That would just undermine the system. And, and Canada, to its uh, credit, doesn't really have religious exemptions, et cetera, personal uh, belief exemptions that exist in the U.S. We don't have here and we shouldn't. What is the worst case scenario, do you think, if provinces back down or... Uh, don't issue these kinds of mandates? Well, I think the worst case scenario is you put patients at risk. I think that's unethical. I think a secondary one is I worry that some provinces have stricter rules than others. So I worry about people moving between jurisdictions, you know, just poaching. And I think that would be bad, again, bad for patients in the, in the jurisdictions where people move to. But I, I don't think that's a huge, huge issue. It's expensive to move, et cetera. So I think that's, a, again, a more fundamental issue is in Canada, we have rich provinces poaching from the poor ones. Uh, that could be accelerated a bit in here. But I, I think, again, it's a minor issue. Okay, Andre, thank you so much for this. Really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. A pleasure. All right, that's it for today. I'm Tamara Kandakar. Our producers are Madeline White, Cheryl Sutherland, and Kasia Mihailovich. David Crosby edits the show. Angela Pachenza is our executive editor. Thank you so much to Andre Picard. You can find Andre on Twitter at Picard on Health. If you want to reach us, you can email us at thedecibel at globeandmail.com. If you want to reach me, I'm on Twitter at anima underscore TK. If you haven't already, hit that follow button wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great long weekend, and I will talk to you on Tuesday. <laughs>